Usually my electronics projects require some kind of microcontroller, and I typically use an Arduino Nano like this. I prefer the Nano to the standard Arduino because it's smaller and it can plug directly into my breadboard. But if I'm designing a custom circuit board, I don't want to have to solder the entire Arduino Nano into it, I just want the single chip. And sometimes I just need a microcontroller that is smaller than this. After all, usually when I'm using a microcontroller, its purpose is fairly simple and it just acts as an oscillator or something to delay, something like that, so it doesn't need a lot of computational power. My solution is to not use the Arduino Nano and to instead use this ATtiny85. I usually only use three or four pins at a time, so it's small, pin count should not be an issue. And size-wise, they do not compare, the ATtiny is clearly significantly smaller. So not only does it cover a smaller footprint, but it would also be appropriate for a finished circuit board product. Many of the tutorials describing how to use an ATtiny, specifically how to program it, are outdated and no longer work. So today I'm going to show you how to program and wire an ATtiny using the most up-to-date Arduino software. It's really not that complicated and it's certainly very helpful once you have it figured out. So the first thing I'm going to do is simply plug my cable into my computer and then plug in my Arduino. I'm going to be using an Arduino Nano for this, but you could also use an Uno or a Mega just fine. So the first thing we need to do here is set up the Arduino Nano as an ISP. An ISP is what's actually doing the programming when you upload a sketch. So first I'll open up the Arduino IDE. The Arduino IDE already comes with a pre-programmed Arduino as an ISP file. So if I first go to File, and then Examples, down here to Arduino ISP, then there's one option right here. So I'm going to download this file to my Arduino so that it can act as a programmer. I'll make sure that my COM, my board, my processor is all set the correct settings like normal, and they are. There is one thing we should quickly change in here. If you scroll down a little bit, you will find this commented out, define use old style wiring. I'm going to be showing you the old style wiring. You could use the normal. So I'm going to quickly uncomment this, and it will set up the program to work with old style wiring, which is what I will show you you can use it in the new way and it'll work just fine. So once I've done this, I will then go ahead and upload the sketch to my Arduino Nano. The next step after that is to set up the Arduino IDE to be able to work with AT Tiny boards. This process used to be somewhat complicated, but it has been streamlined as of recently. This article here has a link to a GitHub repository that has all of the necessary files to allow your Arduino IDE to work with AT Tiny. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this link here. I will also leave this link in the description so that you don't need to find the article. You can just copy it directly from there. So now when I go back to my Arduino IDE, I'm going to go to File and then Preferences. And you'll see down here, there's this little input box here that says Additional Boards Manager URLs. So that link we just copied, we can go ahead and paste it in here. If you already have a link in here, you can put in an additional link, separating them by commas, and then we'll hit OK. So now you have linked your Arduino IDE to the correct location. Now we just need to install the boards. So if I go to Tools, and then Board, Boards Manager, it'll show you all the potential boards you can use. If you just search AT Tiny, it should come up here. This is the board file that you just linked it to. Then if you have not already installed this board, there will be a little button over here for you to install it. Mine already is installed, so you can't see that button, unfortunately. But all you have to do is click install, and it will put everything in the file just as it needs to be. If you don't see this board in the Boards Manager, you may need to reload the Arduino IDE so that it can properly update. But once you have that board installed, you can go ahead and close this tab. Now that you have the board installed, you should be able to select it. So if I go to Tools, and then Board, down at the bottom here, you should see an option for the ATtiny 254585, or the ATtiny 2444 and 84. I have the 85, so I'll select this one. Go to Tools again to specify that I have the ATtiny 85. The standard ATtiny85 oscillator is 1 MHz. If you add an external one or you have a different variation of the ATtiny, 
you will need to select a different oscillator speed. And then while we're at it, let's go ahead and change the programmer. The programmer will need to be changed to the Arduino as ISP option. This option is necessary to tell the computer that you want to program the chip that the Arduino is connected to and not the Arduino itself. The next step here is to get everything wired together. So first I'll take my Arduino Nano, stick it on my breadboard, and then I will stick my ATtiny into the breadboard. Notice that there's a little divot in the top left corner of the IC package. That divot is what indicates the top of the board. Specifically, pin number one is that pin that's right under the divot. So based off that little notch, I will stick it into the breadboard so the top is facing this way. We're going to need six total jumper wires to connect the Arduino to the ATtiny. Like I said earlier, I'm going to be showing you the old wiring method. That's where you connect these external pins directly to the ATtiny. Notice that the Arduino Nano has six pinholes on the end here. These pins are the equivalent to the ones that I'll be using on the outside here. So you can also use these six pins here and it would work just fine. So right now I'll put an image of the wiring connections on the screen right now. Feel free to pause on that to hook everything up. So first I'll wire my five volts to the VCC of the chip. Then I'll wire my ground to ground. Next I'll do pin one of the ATtiny to pin 10 of the Nano. Pin seven on the ATtiny goes to pin 13 on the Nano. Six then goes to 12 and five goes to 11. So your wiring should look similar to this. So when it's all wired together, I will plug my Arduino back in. So I pulled up the blink file from the Arduino examples. Go to your tools and verify that everything is set to what it should be. So my board, ATtiny254585, specifically ATtiny85. My clock is one megahertz. I'm on COM4. And it's very important to make sure that the programmer is set to Arduino as ISP. At this point, you may burn the bootloader if you have not done so already. So if you've just gotten a fresh ATtiny from the factory, you will most likely need to burn the bootloader. It's possible that when you bought it, it was already done for you, but that's unlikely. If you try to upload a sketch and you are having problems with it, it is somewhat likely that the bootloader has not been burned into it. I already have on mine, so I will skip that step for now. So in this blank sketch, I'm going to change it a little bit. The ATtiny does not have a built-in LED pin, so I'll go ahead and just change it to number three. Now everything is set up correctly, and I can just go ahead and upload the sketch. So a few times when I've done this, it's thrown an error the first time, but then I'll do it again, and there's no more error. So it's possible that everything's set up that you just need to do it a couple times to get everything through. So the second time I did it here, there were no errors. So at this point, I have properly programmed the ATtiny using the Arduino Nano as an ISP. Now that it's programmed, wiring it together is quite simple. I'm gonna take out all these wires, take out the Arduino. All you need to do is connect five volts to the positive and the negative of the board, and it will run properly. So five volts is the top right corner here, and ground is the bottom left. Now my file was a blank sketch, and it was off of pin three, so I'll connect my LED from three to ground. So now if I turn on my power supply at five volts, remember it has to be five volts. If it's any more than that, you will very quickly fry the board. I turn on the power supply, the LED blinks at one second intervals. No fancy circuitry required or anything like that. It would be a good idea to put a capacitor in parallel with the power supply to decouple it from the power supply in order to remove voltage spikes but that's also not always necessary. If you are going off of a 12 volt power supply or a 20 volt power supply, something like that, you are going to need some sort of voltage regulator in order to step down the voltage to the five volts you need. Again, it's very important that you do not power it beyond five volts or the board itself will fry immediately. You can also add an external oscillator if you need to, but it doesn't need it. One megahertz is certainly enough for almost every application. So that's all there is to it. The wiring is really not that complicated, doesn't require any fancy circuitry or capacitors or anything like that. And once you've set everything up for the first time, programming other ATtiny's is super easy because everything is already prepared. So using ATtiny's in your circuits is a super helpful thing. It's not that difficult to use. And I highly recommend that anyone who's into electronics try this out and start using 
these to make more professional circuits right away. But that's all I have to show you for now, so bye.